Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video, I will be bringing you guys my first Washington football team 2022 mock draft of the offseason. It'll be three rounds, so make sure you guys stay tuned for all the picks. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content and also hit that like button and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video and I would really appreciate if you guys could go ahead and follow my Twitter. I'm trying to get to a thousand followers on there. Now let's get right into the mock draft. Now that the Washington football team season is officially over, we know where they will be picking in the 2022 NFL draft. They have the 11th pick in the first round and the 11th pick in every round that they have a pick in. So, you know, not a bad spot considering, you know, how their season went. They will be in position position to draft one of the top three quarterbacks this year in the draft. The question is, will their top quarterback be available? Likely not. They might have to move up a few spots. It really just depends because if you look at the first five, first four picks, definitely None of those teams will be taking a quarterback in this draft. The Giants, that's a different question, but still they have bigger, bigger holes. Their offensive line is terrible and their D-line is there, you know, they need some edge rushers. Carolina, they will definitely address the quarterback position that uh, this offseason. The question is, do they, you know, address it before the draft? Do they trade for someone like Deshaun Watson? Derek Carr, maybe Jimmy G, um, Russell Wilson. I know those are some big names there, but if they do that, then they will be off the table, and that's one less team that we have to compete with. And then the Denver Broncos are another team, and they are much more appealing to some of those big name quarterbacks because they do have the pieces already in place. So you know, those are really the two teams that really concern me. Uh, you know, Atlanta. They've talked about a lot how they feel good about Matt Ryan, you know, being their quarterback moving forward. So they likely won't take a. QB. So the biggest threats to Washington in terms of drafting a QB before them are Carolina and Denver. So let's go ahead into this mock draft and this will be a QB draft. So I'm going to be taking a quarterback in the first round. We're going to switch up the themes, you know, every few uh, mock drafts that I do. But currently right here, you look at, you know, Matt Corral got, you know, drafted already, I believe to the Denver Broncos, but Kenny Pickett is still available. He's the top quarterback available. If we look at some of the other QBs, you got Kenny Pickett, who's the 11th ranked player in this class, and we have pick 11. You got Sam Howell, Desmond Ritter, and Carson Strong, all still available, and Malik Willis is also available. But I'm going to take Kenny Pickett. I really, really like him, and I think, you know, he could potentially be the franchise quarterback the Washington football team is looking for about six foot two. Uh, he's more like six foot three, 220 um, ish pounds. And, you know, you look, we'll look at his stats a little bit. Actually, we'll look at it right now before we get into the scouting report. You see right there, six three, 220 ish pounds. Uh, this past season, for you know Pittsburgh, he threw 4,300 yards, 42 touchdowns, seven interceptions, and got sacked 29 times. And rushing the ball, he had 97 attempts for 241 yards and five touchdowns. But I do believe those numbers are definitely misleading. If you watch, I haven't watched a ton of films, uh, film on these quarterbacks. I've more been doing receivers and linebackers so far. But I'm gonna get to quarterbacks in the next couple weeks, but you know, watching some of the highlights and watching some of his film, he is much more athletic and much more mobile than these numbers suggest because these numbers right here are saying that he averaged 2.5 yards in attempt this past season, 1.8 yards in attempt the year before, but I mean, he is really mobile, able to evade pressure. I mean, he kind of reminds me of Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, definitely more mobile than Joe Burrow, kind of the same as Justin Herbert, might even be a little bit quicker. Um, he's able to, you know, manipulate the pocket a little bit. He's very also poised in the pocket, and if it does break down, he can evade, you know, evade the pocket and make some off-platform throws on the run. He he does it all, and you know, he's much more mobile than you would think just looking at these stats. And I think in a, you know 
offense to actually, you know, design some runs for him and is a little bit more creative, I think he'll, you know, be able to get way more than 241 rushing yards on 97 attempts. He's obviously not going to have nearly 90, you know, nearly that amount of rushes. He's not going to have 97 rushes, but I think he will have more designed rushes instead of, you know, a lot of QB sneaks like he had this year, you know, where he's just going for one yard. And a lot of those are kneels as well. I think he'll have a lot more design runs, which, you know, hopefully if, you know, Washington does draft him, Scott Turner uses him that way and gets him on the run a little bit. And especially, you know, in goal line situations, because he is a little, you know, he has a solid frame, six foot three, 220 pounds, might even, you know, bulk up a little bit in the NFL. And I think you'll be able to use him in the red zone, get him in the end zone, get him a few touchdowns as well. So real quick, let's read some of the scouting reports um, on him. So he is a four-year starter. That's the thing. He's going to be probably the most NFL-ready quarterback of this class. I mean, one of the cons of that is, you know, he has been um, a in the college player for five years so he's going to be a little bit older but that's there's also benefits with that because he will be kind of ready earlier than some of these other prospects like Malik Willis and others but four years starter he has a bunch of records from you know at Pittsburgh he has you know he's a terrific vertical passer that can work off script and make things happen with his legs he has terrific command and confidence running the offense and does a wonderful job of blending an aggressive mentality with consistency working his progressions so you guys can read some of this here but you know just watching him he has a pretty good deep ball sometimes he under throws it a little bit but i think you know he can work on some of those me mechanics um in the nfl with ken zampezi if he is still here and i assume he will be and you know that's his you know maybe his biggest con right there and also that he's going to be 24 when he comes into the nfl so maybe there's a little bit of you know not as much potential but i don't think so i think you know comparisons might be a little bit like kind of like a Derek carr he's never i don't think he's going to be like a top five quarterback ever but i think he has a chance to consistently be in that top 12 range a little bit more than that and i really like what he has to offer and you know he is one of these guys that we wouldn't necessarily need to bring in a veteran i think kenny pickett could start right away because of his experience. He started four years and played a little bit in 2017 as well. So I think this would be a great pick for Washington and he can start right away. Okay, so now for our second round pick, we have a few different options. You know, we obviously took Kenny Pickett in the first round, so we will not be taking a quarterback. Malik Willis is still available. You know, there's a good cornerback available. I don't think we need to go cornerback. Kendall Fuller had an outstanding second half of the year. And, you know, William Jackson didn't pan out the way we thought he would, you know, early on, but like Kendall Fuller, kind of played better as the season went on, and I think he will be a good corner for us, and I don't really think corner is a huge area of need. Always depth is needed, so we can re-sign Torrey McTire, and maybe even draft some guys like in the fourth-ish round, fifth round, but I think second round is a little bit too early for cornerback. I really like Kenneth Walker, but again, uh, running back, you know, we could use another running back, but Gibson is good for now, over a 1,000 yards, and, you know, we could use a running back to take a few carries per game off of him. That could be Jarrett Patterson. That could be, you know, someone like Ronald Jones, but, um, again, someone in the second round, that's a little bit too early for me. I'd rather take a running back later in the round or not even take one. Uh, so I think, you know, a really good uh, player that we could get here would be David Bell, from Purdue, you guys can see some of the other players available. Christian Harris, linebacker out of Alabama, could be an option, but I do think Washington will try to get a linebacker, a middle linebacker in free agency versus the draft. So I'm going to go ahead, take David Bell. Let's first, you know, we can read, well, we'll look at his stats um, first. So he's about six foot to 205 pounds um th this past season for purdue he was an absolute beast 93 catches 1286 yards 13.8 yards per uh you know uh reception and six touchdowns and then he also um added three rushes for 39 yards so a little bit of you know versatile play right there he's going to translate more to an outside perimeter receiver so that could really turn out well for us if we you know draft him we have terry on the outside we have david bell on the outside and then in the slot 
we have Curtis Samuel and then, you know, Deami Brown, Cam Sims, those guys can rotate in and out. But David Bell would be would be a great pick in my opinion in the second round. I think that's solid value for us. You guys can see um, right here. I mean, he's a good route runner. He gets open. He gets separation, um, has good ball skills. He's not the fastest guy, but honestly, I think he's fast enough. He's good of a, you know, good enough of a route runner to get open. And that's what you need in the NFL. Speed, of course, is great, but speed doesn't mean anything if you can't get open um, and you can't catch the ball. And David Bell doesn't have elite speed, but he's a good route runner. And he has some agility. He can make some guys miss. And I think, you know, he would work well in this offense. You guys can see um, some of his strengths and weaknesses. He's a good, you know, he has great ball skills, um, solid after the catch, you know, um, this guy right here is saying he's not that great at it, but if you watch him, he makes guys miss consistently, and they use him, you know, in screen, uh, with screens, they, you know, give him a few runs as well, so um, I do think his yards after catch um, is not as bad as this guy is saying, I think he can do it, maybe it won't be as good in you know, in the NFL because he does not have the speed, but he's elusive. He's pretty strong too, can break, you know, through some tackles. And I think this would be a perfect compliment to add, you know, to Terry McLaurin and this offense. So draft him. First two picks, offense. Okay, so now for our third round pick, you know, we have a tough decision make to make because I didn't really like any value for the top, you know, available players, you know, that were available right now. You look at it, tight end we don't really need a tight end right now because we do have logan thomas we have john bates you know we have we might re-sign ricky seals jones and you know we have that project in samus reyes so i don't see a need for tight end at this moment even at all in this draft and then running back again a little bit too early and then we got another tight end we got an edge rusher which you know could be tempting because we do need depth there but again too early in my opinion then you keep going down and Brandon Smith is a great linebacker he's you know, might be a better prospect than Chad Muma but he's an outside linebacker we we don't need an outside linebacker we need a middle linebacker so I'm gonna take Chad Muma from Wyoming I think he would be a great um, player for us I know I said I you know um, I think they're gonna take a you know they're gonna sign a middle linebacker in free agency but if they don't Chad Muma would be a really good player to pick in that third round you know range because Nicobe Dean is going to be a first round guy and Chad Muma is kind of like that next guy he's like the he's probably the third best linebacker in this class especially true he, he, he can play kind of all the middle or all the linebacker positions but a lot of people think that his best you know fit would be at middle linebacker so I think he would be a really good uh you know pick for the Washington football team if they didn't address the linebacker position in free agency. Um, he's a converted safety, so he played safety um, and then you know converted to linebacker, so he's a good tackler, obviously solid in coverage because he did play safety. Um, you look at his stats in 2020, 70 tackles, um, one, uh, you know, three sacks, one forced fumble. This year, 142 tackles, 85 solo tackles, one and a half sack, uh, sacks, and then three interceptions with two touchdowns. Obviously, the, he's not playing against great competition, Mountain West, but still, um, he's played pretty well, and I think he's going to be a day two pick, very likely a day two pick, depending on the numbers at the combine and I'm not sure if he's going to play at the senior bowl or not but that also could definitely help him so I think those you know three picks were solid for the Washington football team taking Kenny Pickett addressing your huge 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 hole at the quarterback position helping him out a little bit adding another you know offensive weapon to this offense in David Bell and then in the third round you know solidifying that linebacker position and that defense in adding Chad Muma. So that is going to be it for today's mock draft. In the next couple mock drafts, not sure when they will come out, but I will be, you know, going at least an extra round to the 4th and, you know, eventually we will do a full 7 round mock drafts. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Peace.